Hello, this is Susanna Henderson, Partnership Officer for the Cities Alliance. I'm here with Julian Baskin, Head of our Program Unit. Today we are discussing World Water Day. Some quick facts, over 2.1 billion people do not have access to clean, safe drinking water. Um, Cities Alliance is a program that focuses on urban development and poverty reduction, SDG 11, and the water SDG is SDG 6. So Julian, can you tell me a little bit about uh, Cities Alliance's thinking on water and the critical impact it has for cities? All right, thank you, Sid. So I think it's obvious that water is fundamental to life. And when one thinks about water, one thinks about crystal clear water, one thinks about streams, a river, and things related to the environment and life. But when you look at the work that Seas Alliance does, when you look at the slum settlements in many parts of the world, we see water not so much in terms of life, we see water in terms of death. And we see water in two ways. The first way is people simply do not have access to clean drinking water. And what does that mean? It's obvious. If water is fundamental to life and you don't get clean drinking water, your kids then become diseased and has a major impact on the kids' ability to study, has a major impact on your ability to work, etc. So the one point we look at water is the whole question of do people have access to water? And yes, people do have access to water because without water you would be dead. The question is, do they have appropriate access to water? Do they have access to water of any quality? And the truth of the matter is that a vast majority of people living in the slums of African cities and in Asian cities have to drink water that's informally provided and provided at high cost to low quality. The second thing about water is, of course, when often you're going to a settlement, you won't see clean drinking water, but you'll see a lot of flood water and you'll see a great deal of settlements when it rains, there's simply no drainage to able the water to leave the settlement, and so water there becomes a major problem, also causing disease and also undermining the economy there. So the question then is, what can we do about it? Well, the first thing we have to do, which City Alliance does a great deal about it, is empower slum dwellers to ensure in their negotiations with governments that the type of infrastructure that is needed is put into their slum settlements. The other thing we need to be doing, of course, is recognizing that we have to protect the natural environment that provides water in the first place. In too many cities, the groundwater is polluted so that the water that people can drill down to and get from boreholes, if it's not provided through pipes and through treated water, is polluted and not able to be drunk. So we have to look at the question of how we protect the groundwater. The second thing, of course, we have to do is make sure that the rivers and the natural drainage systems in the city are protected so they can provide their natural ecosystems. So the Cities Alliance has an approach that says water is fundamental to the work that it does, but it locates water in a broader thing around the, a broader set of issues around the rights of people to the city and the rights to people to get access to properly supplied, uh, affordable, good access quality infrastructure. Great. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thanks very much, Julian.